School Lifestyle, the new healthy transformation American schools have in their students. Hello, I am Jacob Johnson, and I'll be talking about why American schools are unhealthy for their students. Through my research, I have found that constant sleep deprivation, unappetizing and unhealthy school lunches, and excessive stress are all negative issues students face daily. The research and discovery of those issues prompt the question, how are schools creating an unhealthy lifestyle for students? If American schools provide students the proper amount of sleep, healthy school lunches, and a way to manage stress, then they will develop a nourishing environment for the students. This would eliminate damaging trends and teach students how to sustain a healthy lifestyle, while also allowing them to reach peak performance in school. Education on healthy living would benefit students by providing them with a guideline for healthy living after high school. Therefore, proper education on health is essential in American schools. This leads me to my thesis. The American public school system needs to change because it perpetuates an unhealthy lifestyle for students through excessively early school start times, non-intrusive school lunches, and excessive amounts of stress. Through the cultural lens, I learned about how schools practice early start times and how those times have an impact on the performance of students. Jessica L. Tun states that teens should get about 9.2 hours of sleep every night in order to perform well in school. Yet, it has been found that high school students sleep an average of 7.2 hours a night. Tun is an online producer and a staff writer who identified that high school start times range from 7 o'clock to 7.30 a.m., which requires students to wake up between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m., and students need to sleep as early as 8 o'clock p.m. to get nine hours of sleep. Tun states that students reportedly earning mainly A's and B's went to bed earlier on both weeknights and weekends than those who received D's and F's. Paul Caputo, who earned a bachelor's degree in human biology, supplements Tun's research by explaining the benefits of sleep, which includes improved mood via the reduction of anxiety, reduced risk of depression and emotional instability, improved athletic performance, and enhanced ability to learn a variety of different subjects and skills. All the effects of adequate sleep are ideal for a proficient performance amongst students. Tun proposes moving the start times of schools forward by explaining that the 39,000 student Minneapolis school system changed its high school starting time from 7.15 a.m. to 8.40 a.m., which resulted in improved attendance, less sleeping in class, and less student-reported depression. Moving the start times of schools forward would allow students to be better suited to perform at high levels within the school environment. Parents, coaches, and students of the school district were concerned that the later high school dismissal would cut into, into sports teams' practices and thus hurt athletics. Contrary to the district's opinion, the school won a championship in boys basketball, boys football, and girls basketball the same year the district moved the school start time. Through the scientific lens, I was able to learn about how high schools are creating, an unhealthy, creating unhealthy lunches that contribute to obesity. Candice Norbell, a writer who specializes in English and literature, states that schools, school lunches are unhealthy and, un, and unappealing to students. Norville explains that school lunches have 85% more sodium, 50% more saturated fat, and 25% more fat of all kinds than the U.S. De Department of Agriculture, the USDA, recommends. Mark Elman, who earned a Bachelor of Science degree and a medical degree, degree supplements Norville's conclusions by proposing the idea that increased childhood obesity seems to be linked to increased intake of unhealthy foods rather than decreased energy expenditure. I'm going to expand on his claim by explaining that the rise in meat, cheese, and frozen dairy products in school meals contributes to obesity. He reveals, he reveals that within a yearly amount of food consumption per person since 1909 to 2007, meats went up from 124 to 200 pounds, cheese went up from 4 to 33 pounds, frozen dairy products went up from 1.5 to 25 pounds, and oils went up from 35 to 87 pounds. Norval and Elman both reveal that unhealthy and unappealing lunches are being served to students. To combat this, Norval proposed the solution to ban foods containing less than 5% of the recommended daily allowance of the eight basic nutrients. Following this ban, Norval states that schools will be taking the step to healthier alternatives in the cafeteria such as turkey burgers or veggie burgers instead of cheeseburgers and baked potatoes instead of fries. These changes would allow students to consume a healthier diet which would limit obesity within schools. The expenses that schools would have to cover would remain the same due to the fact that their lunches would now be swapped for healthier alternatives. Through the social lens, I found that students within schools are facing stress from multiple outlets. Stress can be defined as an emotional or physical demand, a strain or stressor, which causes the body to release powerful neurochemicals and hormones. 
Laurel Mellon, an associate professor and the founder of Emotional Brain Training, explains that one reaction to stress, to stress is substance abuse. Mellon analyzes national health data that shows a startling rise in death rates for middle-aged white Americans. In the date, it was shown that those death rates were increasing due to unhealthy responses to emotional diseases. Those responses included substance abuse and opioid overdoses. Mellon relates drugs to stress eating by stating that if we are stressed and reach for cookies, the brain imprints a survival drive for cookies. Stress eating and substance abuse are both strategies the brain uses to cope with stress. It recognizes substances such as a large amount of junk food, drugs, or alcohol as a survival drug, which is why substance abuse is present within schools. In a more reasonable situation, many students within school, schools cope with stress by smoking or vaping. And Jessica Elton adds on to Mellon's idea by listing the different ways in which students feel stressed. The Milwaukee-based National Association of Health Education Centers and the Department of Health Education and Recreation of Southern Illinois University of Carbondale conducted a survey which showed stress in the lives of students as young as 13 years old. Those students reportedly reported that they were all being stressed out by grades, homework, family issues, and issues involving friends and peers. Mellon states that emotional brain training, or EBT, is a logical strategy for preventing and treating emotional health problems. To students, high school stress comes in the form of tests, preparation for college, and even parental expectations. Those stresses can be dealt with with EBT which would not only relieve stress, but teach students how to cope with future stress. EBT only, would only be effective if teachers undergo training taking both time and money. Effective use of both resources would allow teachers to help students eliminate and manage their stress. Jessica L. Tun, Candice Norvell, and Laura Mellon all identify solutions to combat specific issues embedded in school. But none of those solutions can be effective without communication between students and teachers. Edward Kessler, the founder of Wolf Institute, Answers the, questions, answers the question, how are schools creating an unhealthy lifestyle for students by proposing, this, by proposing social media as a platform for communication and connection? The internet is a viable platform to solve multiple issues in schools and would act as a way both students and staff can communicate. In doing so, light can be shed on various issues present throughout schools and action can be followed up by individuals who have the power to do so. Kessler states that social media's impact depends on the people who use it. As a consumer, students experience the issues within schools, so their opinions should be, should be valued among staff to create an environment where they can thrive. With channels of communication established, schools can collaborate with students in order to instate the most effective solution for students. Thank you. <clears throat> Jacob, thanks. Okay, let me ask you the first question. Uh, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use in the paper or the presentation, and why did you choose to leave it out? Um, for stress in schools, I did not include um, personal recollections, so I didn't use the, uh, the insight of students in that. Um, I only used data from uh, two sources or two speakers, but I didn't include, you know, voices of students, students who you know, would have said they're experiencing stress from one thing over another. I only took the voices of the sources that I gathered. Okay. And two, uh, how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources that you examined? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you about your, um, the solution you came up with with, with Kessler. So how does that, uh, <coughs> that conclusion respond to the solutions that were offered by your other sources? Okay, so the solutions offered by the other sources obviously, you know, dealt with specific issues within schools, but Kessler really did all three of them together and proposed a solution, uh, an effective solution, to, to make sure those are effective. So uh, Jessica Elton stu uh, states that uh, a solution to early school start times would obviously be uh, later start times, Kenneth Narvell states that, uh, you know, healthy alternatives to school lunches now, and Laurel Mellon uh, proposes EBT as a solution um, for, for stress in school. And then uh, Edward Kessler just reels all them together by proposing that all three of those solutions can be effective through social media. Students can, you know, talk to staff and, you know, they will have the power to, to do anything about it. So they can only be effective that way. Okay, thank you.